Okay. So I don't, nobody's here yet. So we're just going to go ahead and start. Let's see, can I flip this? Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Flip web cam YouTube live stream. Is it possible? Okay. Well, that's not gonna work. upside down which I do do that sometimes but let's not do that today huh and then quick and also straight and also way I think it's good okay okay so nobody's here yet we're gonna go ahead and start because I gotta do this anyway Anyway, might as well live it. Okay, so the thing with the big art, big eye movement in um, the 1960s, and it actually was a pretty big movement because the thing that made it big was a lot of Americans were coming back from the war and they were able to afford, you know, oh God. Come on. I didn't even touch anything. Okay. Let's move that away. I don't want to touch that much. Okay. And you too. Put you there. Uh, I too. Okay, good. That's good. Okay. So the thing with these paintings is in the 1960s, people were coming back from the war and they wanted pictures to put on their walls right but paintings cost a lot of money so because they had just come out with um mass production printing and it was it so, so basically these paintings were in art galleries and people would come in and they couldn't have painting itself because it, it's expensive to buy painting. And, you know, they didn't have internet so they could go grab whatever piece of artwork they wanted. So I like to go for these pieces of art because they would grab the pieces of art, the, the, you know, the, the flyer or whatever with the, with the piece of painting. And just be able to have something in their house. You know, they put the advertise their... Um, so it would be like their first piece of art that they really didn't have to pay for. So the person selling them, whose name was Walter Kane, saw this and he had the idea, well, why do like a flip, charge pretty much for it? So this was mad large eye kids were. And honestly, that's not even the, you know, that's uh, whatever, that's normal or whatever. The crazy part is, though, this guy who said he was painting them, he wasn't painting them. He actually had his wife locked up in the basement, and his wife was painting all these paintings. And she would paint, like, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. But, you know, it just, she just kept on painting them, and, like, he would go and he would go to coke parties and, you know, drug parties and 
just leave his wife at home painting these paintings. And uh, so it's no wonder they're they're really sad paintings. These paintings are so sad. Like typically they're just so depressing. But that's the reason is because basically this woman who painted these paintings, what she was she liked doing them. She actually still does them a little bit, but they're less sad now. But when she was doing them, she was doing them from like her basement. And it was like the 1960s. So women had just into the workforce, but they weren't as you know common as they are now. So if she wanted to get away, she didn't get away that easily. And again, her husband was taking credit for them. So, and you know, when she would, when they would sell or, you know, sell a print, she wouldn't get the money. He'd get the money. So she can't really get another job was taking all the you know all the money from him and she's just she just kind of like gave up for a very long time like just gave up but you know eventually you kind of want to leave the basement so she was able to sue her ex-husband had been divorced him by that point and that was a big to do it wasn't as common to divorce people back then she divorced him and she basically, and in the court, they actually had Walter Keene, like, come up to the stand and try to paint these paintings. And Margaret did it in, like, a couple of minutes. And her husband just basically made an excuse, said, no, I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not inspired right now. I can't do it. And so the judge was like, looked at her was like, yeah. I'm pretty sure she did the paintings because she had painted like a painting in like 10 seconds. Another guy had, you know, just sat there and said, Oh, I can't paint them. I can't paint them. So who would you, you know, the stuff, who would you think did the painting? <laughs> She's retired in Hawaii and she still paints them, but they look happier now than they did then. They look sad back then. But again, this was a painting that was in everybody's house for like the 1960s. In fact, your grandparents may have them in their house still from the 1960s. And everybody thought that they were painted by this man. And it was a predator. Like men, some, some men, not all men, but some men, like he knew what he was doing. The guy who, um, there are rumors that with Lisa Frank, I don't know, y'all know who that is, the unicorn lady. If you've ever been to an arts, you know, like shopping for art, school supplies, you'll know Lisa Frank. She's got unicorns everywhere. So Lisa, like, kind of ignoring, I guess, her, she just wanted to paint. And who can really blame her? And her husband was doing kind of skeevy things in the background. So, you know. Some people like to take advantage. So when she was just recently, she had actually been divorced before. She got, this is her second divorce. She got divorced before and she would make it. And she had, um, she had a job, but of course it didn't pay that well, where she was just basically a painter and they, they, they did a lot of hand back then and a lot more, um, you know, manufacturing in the United States. So she was a painter in like a furniture store for furniture. So she'd paint in like little birds and such. And, you know, she had a kid and she was trying to make it. So she basically would market and try to sell her paint, you know, basically a caricature artist. So she would draw pictures of people real quick, you know, and There was another guy who was selling paintings at the same time and his name was Walter Keene, of course. And he started flirting with her and, you know, he was selling landscapes at the time. And the funniest thing is actually those landscapes weren't his either. Those were his ex-wife's that he had in the basement. <laughs> he did this twice. So before he did this, he actually did it to another woman where he basically had her paint some paintings. And then he was basically, he was a salesman. That's his talents lie. He really should have been in car 
salesman or even like the um the mcdonald's franchise guy who basically um i don't know if you know about the story but um uh, and that's a movie too actually there's a there's a movie about called the founder where basically everybody thinks that mcdonald's is a um fast food company it's actually not what it is it's a franchise so what mcdonald's kind of does to make money is they're not really selling burgers they're selling the idea of selling burgers see so there's a difference there so they don't really care if you know the local company is making money they care about like are they so the way they do this they sell land they basically sell land to people who want to sell burgers and they get it all you know they tell all the different stuff they um oh it's so hard to get acrylics to work well sometimes because they're so uh like but i hate paint thinner i'm 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 a, I'm a wimp i don't like paint thinner so i deal with it anyway but mixing some paint here of course, I got a reference. I'm not this is an exercise. I'm not really gonna. This is an afternoon painting for me. I'm not really gonna care what I'm painting. So we're making a bunch of art for my wall. Everything on here that like it means something to me. You know, like kind of like you get a tattoo, but I'm gonna put it on my wall because I'm a chicken for tattoos. We're just painting things I think are interesting, and I think the big story, the big eye story, is just fascinating. How like cool. Like, I mean, he didn't even have time to do all the paintings he said he was doing because when was he going to have time? He was running around, like, in the 60s with, like, all the drugs and stuff. He didn't have time to do the paintings he was claiming he was doing. But people still believed him because they believed that, you know, oh, maybe he's just fast painter. So, <laughs> so <laughs> they'd sit there and they go, oh, he's just a fast painter. And uh, it's just crazy to me. But... Ah, we let it in there. I don't know. Okay. So I'm just trying to mix a um a good flesh tone, and I was trying to make it duller. It's hard to make acrylics duller. You don't really have a lot of work time. I love them, and part of why I don't. So I have to work fast to get the paint to mix to to like shade, and then add layers. Typically, you you don't want to do that. You want to like have more time with your painting. But I really like doing things fast, and I like that. I get, I get, I get a trade off. I can work fast, and I can, you know, get a reasonable amount of paintings done. Or I could work slower, probably do better, but I could get fewer paintings done. And because I have a lot of work and stuff, the other stuff I have to do, I, I can't like spend like ten hours on a painting, um, and have. So basically, it's really satisfying to me to do something quickly. I'm trying to get a good skin tone, I think. That's maybe about it. Maybe a bit more red. And again, I have a reference photo up here because this is just a relaxed activity for me. I'm not doing creative right now. I'm really good at copying. I'm going to copy. Okay. I think an original key now, I mean, even now, they don't really sell for that much because... People think they're kitschy or whatever. And that's what it's called. It's called kitschy. People think they're kitschy. So they sell for like a thousand dollars, even original. And that's not a lot of like, oh my God, that's not a lot of money for a painting by a famous person. But because it's, I mean, like I said, we're in everybody's house in the 1960s. So why would you spend ridiculous amounts of money for something that's everybody's house? They do have some like more ones that are considered more um, like upscale that sell for about forty thousand, but even that that's that's nothing like nothing, like oh my god, like it's just nothing for that for a kind of painting. So, I mean, if you want to are painting, most people who who paint now and you know aren't as well known as her probably. God, like you could get a painting for them for a couple thousand. Like it's, it's, she's not really, it's just 
fascinating. Like, how did people sit there and ignore that this man was treating this woman this way for literal decades? Like, it wasn't a, a ton of time either. It was literally like a decade that this woman was locked in the basement painting paintings while her husband was out, you know, going to parties. And now, well, you know, he likes parties. <laughs> I guess we see what we want to see, don't we? So, uh, yeah. I'm going to go painting. I guess I'll talk. I've talked most about the history. Nobody's here. So I'm just going to talk about, like, what I'm doing, what my thoughts are while I'm painting it. And if somebody has questions or whatever, I'll, you know, answer them afterwards. But Or if I see anybody join, I might repeat the story. But for right now, what we're just going to do is just going to paint. And, uh, again... I'm trying to go, like, I have to go quickly. Like, I cannot go. This is not the kind of painting where you go, oh, I can go so, I can't go so here. No. I'm making a slightly dark version of that. I think I'm going to add, like, a little bit of red and black to make it slightly darker. Not yet a little too dark, but so I'm going to try to move and add some water to it. Add some water to it. It makes it thinner. So you can have the illusion of the paint splitting better because it's like you almost now it's almost dry already, which is why I have to move quickly. And you can, like I said, like you can fake it a bit by adding like of like water down color, but you can't really blend that well unless you like immediately go. Like you can't. There's no there's no waiting in acrylics. You gotta go. That's why it's normally it's more more used for like. Probably not best for this. Oil will probably be best for this, but I don't have oil and oil is more expensive. Like some of these paints I have right here, I got them at the dollar store. So I think even the canvas I got at the dollar store. So I like this because it's more accessible for the new artists. Like, I mean, if you want to, you can go buy everything I have here at the dollar store. Like it's easy and follow along. So I'm actually thinking of doing that, like maybe make a way that people can follow along with the painting. But for right now, I think we're good. We're a little uneven. I'm trying to figure out how to fix it. We'll figure it out in a second. And yeah, like I said, we're going to add some white now and highlights and try to save this paint so it doesn't dry out so quickly because you can see it's already drying out. You can go in and blend those a little bit better. Get them to go. And then we'll have to add more layers. So we'll just add the first layer, get the base color down, and then try our best to like layer on extra colors to give it more depth. Because this does not look great. It's that's kind of what this color is. I think it's a little bit too something. We'll figure it out in a second. So now we're gonna go in. And like I said, the eyes are a little bit off. I think this one's a little bit too down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise it a bit by just putting that down and then maybe trying to lower this one a bit. Might even make them bigger because you know it's a big eye painting, like the point it's got big eyes. So and this is definitely not the color she uses. She uses more of a brown color. And we're gonna make it basically make it dark and then add lighter browns to it to like make it look less eyelinery and more you know oil paint because this was done in oil paint i really guarantee you this was not done in acrylic and again we're gonna add some like dark here and start giving it some depth and again we'll add layers on top of it so it'll lighten up eventually but we're just going to get some dark colors going so let's see color that yeah. and again i paint and i draw fast and that's not really a choice like i spent several years working as a caricature artist and like the faster you are the more money you make money at caricature artists it's not like oh i'm gonna go slow and make really good art it's um 
I think my speed was probably around two paintings uh, an hour. Like I, I'm fast. I'd make like a thousand dollars a day. So, uh, but again, that was, I'd make, that's what I sell like $300 usually. Or uh, not usually, that was my most day. Like my biggest day was about $300. Basically, I made more in high school and call it than I did in uh, any other time in my life because I did character drawing. So that was weird. So, but it was before the 2008 financial crash. So people had more money back then. So if you went back and did the same thing, you probably couldn't make as money just because, like, I worked there right at the 2008 crash, I think. And before the 2008 crash, people were throwing money at me. And after, no money won. And I went back several years later, and they'd slashed the prices in half because nobody was buying them at the prices they were selling them. So they had to keep on lowering them to buy, which that's not a good sign. <laughs> but uh, that's not great. But yeah. Okay. So we got that, and we're going to lighten it up now. We're gonna add some yellow to it and some red. So we got yellow and red are, and I, I'm mixing some black in there, but that's, that'll be darker. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need some white with this. So we're gonna add some white because brown, okay? Like there are other ways to make it, but there's actually make it, but that's the most common way. So you add. Red and yellow and a little bit of black and white. And you get a brown. And like people don't realize a lot of paintings are actually brown. Like it doesn't look like it, but they are. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's skin tone again. I actually do like that color better than this color. So we're gonna actually use this a bit and add some more life to it. Looks like it looks like a corpse. Oops. Maybe it is quite so bad, but it looks pretty bad here. Okay. And again, because acrylics, it's very versatile, but it's, it goes very fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some water to it and basically blend it. So that way it, it gives the illusion of its blending. Like this paint, that's dry. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the fun though, right? If it was oil, it would be like, oh, I don't care. I have like another five hours to work on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm starting to. It's, 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 it's not my best work ever. It's definitely something I want on my wall because I really, I dig the story behind it. Like, how did that happen? Like, I just cannot imagine it. And it look a little bit better. So that's starting to look like it. And I'm concentrating on the face this time. Like last time I did one of these paintings, I think I concentrated on the background. And the reason for that was because the Mona, I think I painted the Mona Lisa last like this. So, but the Mona Lisa is a lot more about the background. Like some of the reasons the Mona Lisa is famous are because of the, what is it called? Oh God, my blank, brain just went blank. The atmospheric perspective, that's it. That's it, that's what it's called. So the atmospheric perspective in um, Mona Lisa is very famous because that's one, one of the things he was known for. And um, you may not know what that is, but basically what that is is stuff far, further away from you turns whiter and um, bluer. So if you look at like mountains far away, they'll look slightly blue even if they aren't. Right, they'll they look slightly blue. They're probably not blue. They're probably like brown or green or whatever. But they look blue and like white. 
And the reason they do that is because of atmospheric perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, Leonardo was a master of it. Like, he just, he knew how to make things look like they were further away or just by color. And basically, that's just what they... That's what he's famous for. Oh, yeah. I think I want to add, I'm getting impatient. I, I like to have stuff, stuff as close as quick as possible. So I'm going to add some blue to it, put it in the background. And it's like a white background. I think we're gonna do like a right white blue background. Just because that was what the the kitschy vibe just a white blue background. These least paintings were just supposed to be not offensive. And like I said, there were thousands of copies of them because of the print press, which is popular. My favorite thing about acrylics and the worst part is always the painting. Like I love the fact I can fill this up. And I can create, you know, if the faster you go, the more it looks like oil. Like, but you can never make it look exactly like oil. I'm, I'm a coward because I hate paint thinner. And I have animals too. Like I worry, like probably more than I should. I worry about my animals and the paint thinner. Like my cat recently has actually started, um, she for some reason loves the feel of plastic in her mouth and that's been freaking the knee the hell out. So my cat basically just goes and like the plastic and I'm like, like I'll, I'll, I have to catch her like all the time and I can't leave any plastic in the house. So I can't imagine having paint thinner around and my cat's like, oh, what's this? And then, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. So I could probably keep it outside maybe, but I don't have really a porch. And my cat likes to go out the porch too. Every time. But yeah. I guess some people are here. It's hard for me to tell if I've done this. Okay. So we're gonna talk about like why this pair of the ones I've chosen for my wall on panel. So I'm just basically paint, re painting pictures for my wall that I find historically or like stuff. And um, this is basically a big eye painting from the 60s. In there, significant to me is because the woman who painted them was basically locked in a closet and just forced to paint these over and over again. And to me, that's just insane. And it's actually a movie by Tim Burton. If you want to go look it up, it's called Big Eyes. And again, it's her husband just took credit for it. Would go to like parties and pretend that he was doing them. So I think that actually might be bots. Maybe. But yeah. I'll probably put, the, you know, clean the story up a bit and put it on talk later. Oh, so like speed painting of me painting it. So it'll look better when it's finished. It's a little hard for me to paint that. I'm at a weird angle. Let's see if I make it a little less weird for me. 
Why didn't I get tissues? That was one of the things I had to get, and I did not get them. Ugh. Carry on. This cheek's a little bit too off. We're going to fix that a bit. Is ugly though, so I want to make it my intent. My um inclination is always to paint paintings happy because oh, she probably was, but that's probably not what she was thinking when she was painting this. So keeping it sad as much as possible so the color palette can't be too um. So color palettes are very interesting. So there are you know we as a human brain us find color to different um, emotions. So basically that we see is happy and sad are very interesting and the color theory is really an interesting thing to look into. So some of my favorite colors are always happy. Like I like rainbows and I like that, but a lot of depth. And if you want to paint anything like semi-realistic, you can't use very happy colors because if you go and you like take a picture of something and put like a painter in it, it's never as bright as you think it is. It's always darker than you think it is. And, but are like, like, I mean, how many times do you see that color blue anywhere real in real life? The sky, the sky. I might have it, but other than that, it's not really anywhere. So, not really realistic or no. So you have to always strike a balance, unless you're going for super cartoony, of between like, color doesn't look that happy, you know, it's more realistic. So you always have to strike a balance of something being too happy or too sad. And, you know, I'm just going to add some like, texture in the background with some blues. I probably should have painted the entire thing blue, honestly. Normally, I actually like the background first, and then I paint in the other stuff. But I was trying to be a little bit more easy to follow for this live stream, so I decided not to do that. So we're not going to do that. So now we got to go in and paint the blue afterwards instead of before, because I normally paint the, I paint the blue before and then paint the girl blue. It'd be easier for me to add stuff without ruining my painting, my drawing, you know. I like that. Yeah. There we go. Oh, I'm out of white. I thought I had another bottle, but I don't think I. I'll go grab some real quick. White's always the color I use the most because I always have like <laughs> it's ridiculous how much white I have. Let's 
So we're going to add some white to it to make it more toned down. Because again, I always go for the bright color. That's not really what this painting is about. This painting is supposed to be sad. Kind of lonely. But with big eyes. And that's the biggest part. The are the point of the painting. Just gonna add some white. Start muddying it out a bit, especially on the background because that's the easiest part. And like, now this paint, this thing right here, it looks too brushy to me. I wanna make it um, more textured. So we're gonna just take a paper towel and just go like this and I'll add some texture to it real quick. I have to do it while it's wet or else this won't. And I'll hide some brush strokes and make it look like I spent more time on it. Well, I didn't. Cat's here. She just jumped up on my lap. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. What are you doing? What are you doing, kitty? She behind me now? Okay. There we go. Yeah, looks nice. I'm going to add some depth to it so what we're going to do is there add some um i don't know if people know like how an eye is built but let me see if i got do i have anything i could draw with okay probably not so an eye is built like this it's a dome right and then you have like a hole here and then your iris is like basically like so when you're trying to make eyes look alive in 3D, what you kind of want to do is you kind of want to keep that in mind, keep like how eyes are actually built. So we're gonna make this. And again, because I was drawing it at an angle, I don't know if people know this, but like the angle you draw your thing at actually affects like how you draw it. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit higher. So I was drawing it at the wrong angle and that's going to make it hard for me to fix it later on. So always make sure you're always look at your painting from different angles to make sure you're painting it correctly. But I painted it at a slight angle, so it's going to make it a little bit off, but I think it'll be okay. So again, yep, yeah, we're just adding as much color as quickly as possible. We've got some nice yellow here. And again, this is brown hair, but there is real color and perceived color. So we're not going to paint it all one color, even though it's supposed to be like brown. Because if we paint it just straight flat, it'll look less depth, I guess is what I want to say. Like it, it'll look like it has more less depth. So by adding like different colors, where my eyes see these different colors, it'll start giving it more depth and it'll look more appealing to the eye. Where did my white go? Oh, it's just my white. There it is. Found it. Because it, it blends into my um my tin always it blends into the white. So I'm always like, where's my white? I just put it down. Where is it? And I add more. And I waste my white. So partially why I have like the huge thing of white is because I just lose it and then it dries before I realize where it is again. <sighs> Add some texture to that. Yeah. Now, um, 
this wasn't in the original, but I think I might add it to mine. I'm going to add some like a bit of like highlighting on the outside of the character. It might make it look a little bit more cartoonish, but I'm typically a cartoonist, like caricature artist for years so fast. So I might go a little bit more cartoonish with it, which is not what it looks like in the, we're gonna go for it. No. Now I'm losing my black. Where did my black go? Now, if you notice, like, I'm not working on the face. I worked on the face first. And basically what I'm doing is I'm working on the other parts. And then, like, go in and I'll add highlights and shadow as another layer at some point. And basically, like, either try to match the color as close as I can and add, like, a different color or down something. Yeah, I think that'll make it look a little bit... We're going to go a little bit golf with it, probably. Which, that's okay. That works well. So, like, I'm going to fix this neckline a little bit. It's centered, I think. It's centered here. And go out like that. And maybe blend it out a bit. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. Of course, going to go here. Add a little bit more depth to the eye here. And basically, what done is we've, we've taken like a, a blue, add some gray to it, made it a dark blue, but not so dark. And we're adding some um, the ring around the thing. What is it called? I think I knew the name at some point. I've forgotten what it is. It's not. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Yeah. Painting eyes is something everyone loves. And I think that's there's a very good reason for that. You know, humans use eyes to figure out, like, what people are saying. And I think I got these a little bit too high. She's looking a little bit more anime than I intended, which, you know, that's something I like to draw at some point. So that's not really surprising. But we might want to try to make them. Maybe I'll just keep them that way. I'm not sure. But they definitely are too much eyeliner. So I'm going to um, dull them out a little bit right now with a little bit of brown. I'm going to add, here's my brown, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to it so it's like watercolor, right? And the reason I do this is because I can go over it, but it's not going to overwhelm the color. I'm just going to change it. As, it makes it look less like eyeliner and more like it's less like it's black. And you should really only do that once it's um, dried a bit or else it's going to blend in. But like I said, I've only been working with painting but 45 minutes. So most of the paint's already dried that I was working on in the beginning. So I can rework some of these areas right now, brown here. And it was black before, now you can see it looks a little bit less black. I might rework it again later on, but it started to dull it quite quickly. And that's what we want, so that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna add a bit more red to it. And the same watered down color, I might add some more water to it. Bit more water to it and a bit more um, probably black to it. Just a bit of a black. And we're going here. This might be a good color to add to that. Mixing paint is probably part of the fun. Like this is this is fun. It's, this is fun. I like this. So I'm gonna add it, add that. Get like a little 
rosy pink. We're basically going to add some blush and some other colors to make her look a little bit more alive and cute. So we got those colors. And we've watered down. So they're not quite as overpowering. And we're going to add them to the cheeks here. Like, like that. Maybe like right here. Kind of like an e-girl look. Probably it's probably about time to spend on the lips too. So we're gonna add, add that to the lips. Right. We'll come back later to add more detail to the lips, but right now we're just gonna add the first layer here and start working on the lips. And again. Now it's a little bit overwhelming, so I'm gonna take some tissue paper and actually dab it here. That helps it blend a bit. It's the illusion that it's blending more than it is, and I spent more time on it, which is what we want. You want the most amount of of texture for the least amount of work, so that works real well. We're going to add, start adding some highlights and other more depth to the hair. And this kind of painting, like, it's understandable because she didn't have like a whole heck of a lot of time to do each painting, but most of these paintings don't have a very good sense of where the lighting is coming from. It's all over the place. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to give that feel, but normally you would, you would pick a source of lighting, figure out where lighting is coming from. But because it's not, we're just going to go for texture and making sure that the painting looks sad and three dimensional. And that's basically what we want. So we're gonna add, we're gonna work on the nose a little bit. The nose is bothering me now, so we're gonna work on the nose again. And the nose is built. I've always had problems with noses. When I was a kid, I hated noses. And if I could get away with it, I wouldn't draw them. And I regret it now because I've always been really bad at noses. I don't think I'll ever get any better, but I'm gonna go for it now. So here's like a little bit of a um a shadow we're going to add and again we're going to add a little bit of texture by taking a bit of tissue and just blotting at it makes it look like we've spent more time on it when we have it all right so i'll take some um white and do my trick with the water so it's really watered down i'm adding highlight and actually i've added a little bit of it's really light, you can see it. I'm gonna add a couple of highlights to accentuate the nose. And if you watch any makeup tutorials, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like we're just gonna add a little bit to the nose, a little bit to the around the mouth, outline the nose. Right. And acrylics are great because they are incredibly versatile. Like I, I complain about them sometimes because like I said, I worry about using any other kind of paint because I'm not incredibly great with paint thinner, but, and I like making a mess. So acrylics are pretty much me, me and my best, my best friend, my acrylics. You get, you, I could, you know, probably paint better with things, but it wouldn't be as fun, like fun as, you know, painting with it and fighting with its drawbacks, you know, try to create what best you can with what you got. I think that's part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, I could buy like $10,000 paints, but what fun would that be when I could buy dollar paints from the dollar store? Like, what fun would that be? I buy dollars from the dollar store and I paint my paintings. And I have one. But, you know, I could probably paint better if I bought the $1,000 paints, but $1,000 on paints. Yeah. There is some sort of weird bird behind me. I don't know what it is. It's having a, it's having a blast. I don't know what he's talking about, but he's having a blast. He, he's really wanting me to know about it. He's really... <laughs> okay. That's probably all I can do for her for right now. We're going to go ahead and go back to work on the... We're going to start work on the cat. I really like this cat here. That's this picture to, to paint. So we're going to add some yellow and some white. 
Got some yellow and some white, and maybe some of that tan color I made a little second ago. And we're gonna mix them together. And we're basically just gonna start painting the cat, and he's gonna be kind of yellowish. His eyes, eyes are blue too. I think it's probably another reason I chose this one is because I like I like blue. So this, this painting has a lot of blue. Compared to the other ones, this has a lot of blue in it, which is perfect for me. Let's get in, paint this here. And again, just the base color. And again, Margaret, which is the painting from, did not have great anatomy sense. This cat's a little janky, but that's what I'm going for. So we're just gonna go with that. Like, that doesn't look right right there. This woman was locked up for years. I painted these paintings over and over again. So it's more about the story to me and what I think of the painting. My biggest fear is as I get older, I'll forget. So that's why I'm doing these paintings is I want to remember things the rest of my life. So I want to cover my wall with paintings and be able to look at walls and like, oh yeah, remember that. So otherwise I'll forget and I know I will. My grandmother was, my grandmother was very forgetful towards the end. Like she was actually, honestly, she was better. I volunteer at old people's homes. And it's so sad towards the end of your life where, you know, you forget things. And you don't remember who's who. And you can look at your husband or your wife. remember. So I want to have a wall of painting. Things, on, things I've watched. Shows I've watched, etc. And then just keep like a diary of it. And I remember I really loved the story. It was a great story. It was a great movie. It was a good book too. And again, it's big eyes is the painting is the, um, Burton actually did it. And he's the guy who did, um, nightmare before Christmas and, you know, or corpse, corpse bride and other stuff. And you can see you know, he's painting. Tim Burton was actually inspired by Margaret Keen Keening to have his style. So, and that's why I do the on her. I wonder, I don't think he had Tim, uh, People like, I'm sure people know this, but Tim Burton and Johnny Depp have a very good relationship. They've always been friends and they like to do movies together and they always have. Like, even if the movies aren't, you know, very popular, I believe John at one point did a movie like Dark Shadows. And I, Dark Shadows is so old, nobody remembered who Dark Shadows was. And so the movie didn't do very well, but Dark Shadows was one of the first like supernatural shows to be on TV. And it was basically like, it was very, honestly, I'm surprised they aired it because in America, the occult has always been kind of looked down upon, either has childish or has scary because, um, of Christianity, the roots in Puritan. Even if you're not like Christian, Christian, you can still be afraid of, of like supernatural stuff. So my mother was like that. Like my mother hated the fact that comic books and you know anime growing up. But now, like if like I was in anime and stuff now, like it would be a big deal. I didn't do it. Literally, scene has like oh, it was it was not good. <laughs> Of course, you know, I totally ignored them and went on to get a Japanese degree and a gaming degree. So. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I probably would have been less into it if my mother liked it, actually. Or at least, you know, didn't fight me on it. It was my way of rebelling, was watching anime. I was such a rebel.
My mother thought I was, but you know, she wanted me to be exactly like her. Of course, I would be, I probably been homeless if I was exactly like her because the um, economy of the time was much better, you know. So she was a teacher, which was great for her. Six months off off a year, you know, with her kids, had kids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, teachers make forty thousand dollars a year, or has it increased? And it, it probably will. So they just do not get paid anything. And like a forty thousand dollar a year salary, but it was probably fine. Like you'd be fine. But nowadays, if you're making that much, it's it's. I don't know how to have done it. Like, I just don't know. Maybe I could have gotten a scholarship to teach. That's the only way I could think. But the problem was, I actually know people who did that. And the problem was they were promised that, hey, if you become a teacher, we'll pay your salary. Or if you become a um, public servant, we'll pay your salary. And so they went into school thinking that if they worked 10 years as a public servant, that they're rest of their student loans to be taken out and they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Like the amount of people who have tried to go that path, they've all been rejected. And like, it's like you promised that if they went to work in the public service and took these low paying public service jobs that you would pay for their, you know, forgive their student loans. And they haven't done it. Like, let's not even talk about like the ones who, you know, were promised, these people were actually promised, hey, we'll pay your student loans. And then they haven't done it. And it's insane. Like, I think, I don't want to say anything like, I agree, but I, it's, just, it's, it's just more than it should be because the people should have been given because that's what they were told and that's what they were expecting and they followed all the rules and the government still said no. Because like, the idea is that everyone's responsible for their own life. And, you know, like if it's you're having a bad life, it's your problem. But you can't run a society like that. You can't live like, you know, half the country makes less than $15. Half the country. Like, I think it's actually less than that. And rents keep on going up there's no public housing there's no public anything so you gotta you gotta do any one thing you have unions Un if your unions are fine back fine whatever but they fight unions too so what are you supposed to do you're supposed to argue on an individual basis with your employer but the problem is you don't have an equal relationship with your employer they are over you so what are you supposed to do <laughs> anyway i I'll go back to art. But I work actually at um, air conditioning. I work for HVAC. Take care of the air conditioners for large stations. And I like my job. It's fun. I get I get to um I know for a fact that I'm actually doing something in the world. Most people will say like, oh, I don't know what I'm actually doing in the world. I'm like, I'm turning off all the in San Francisco because <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. I don't get paid very well. And that's something that's weird about like jobs in America. Like I do do things that make a difference but the strange thing is is i would probably be paid better if i didn't make a difference and that's strange because a lot of technology if you go in and say that you're making a difference but you don't actually make a difference sometimes you get more money it's all about confidence not really about like what you're actually doing But it's always a balancing act. I make a decent prof. I make a decent living. I'm able to like do my art on the weekends, and you know, play with my little sewing projects. 
and practice my art and I don't work. I work 35 hours a week. So I don't work 40 hours a week. I usually work like 30, 35 to 38 hours a week. I do not work 60 to 70 hours a week. And I do make less for that. And I, I know I do. And I just don't care. I'd rather have like a life. And I'd rather know that I'm making a difference. Like, and I do. So that's, that's, that's good for me. And I'm trying to do, start some stuff on the weekends where I just basically teach art and, you know, crafts and make projects for people. So that way I can create more for the world. It's also very satisfying. And like my dream is that I could make a lot of money online, like a small business online. And I could move to Japan. And people will be like, oh, why move to Japan? Well, I speak Japanese. I have a degree in Japanese. I've never been to Japan. And I want to go. And believe it or not, life is cheaper in Japan. And I know it is. So if I could make it online, that is what I would do. I would go to Japan. And Japan also has like a lot of content you can make. If you're in Japan, you can make different kind of vlogs and stuff and make more money. And houses are insanely cheap, like ridiculously cheap. And let's see, I got a little bit more towel in there than I want. Let's see if I can. I'm actually recording at the same time. So I've got two recorders here. So I want to getting a little bit closer maybe I can Just make sure yeah that's fine okay okay I think that's maybe a better way to see the wire from that <laughs> my light just fell okay I think that's okay uh, we're still good okay we're going to go back and revisit the uh, cat now, I think. Now, I've got a bunch of colors here, and I want to see if I can reuse some of them because I don't want to waste paint if I can help it. I'm bad about that, and I know I am. I mean, look at this. This is just one painting. I've just, you know wreck this thing. I, I spent a long time cleaning this. I'm kind of pissed it's already messed. Okay. So okay. like there we go. Time is for six o'clock. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of shadow here. Now, the eyes here. It's gonna bother me to the end. I think I'm always gonna look at this and always go. People get tattoos, and I don't understand people get tattoos because I'm like five seconds after I finish a piece of artwork, I hate it. So, <laughs> so I don't understand people get tattoos and it's on their body for life. Like I'm gonna put this on the wall, and I'm still worried about. It. <laughs> okay. So here, basically eyes are not, um, how do you say, 2D. So you do not want to make your eyes look 2D. So you want to try your, to make them look like they're 3D. So we're going to add a shadow and some like rounding out to give some more depth 
of the whites of the eye. You can see like right here, right there, right there, like that. Now, we're gonna go back in with some, it's a hot minute, so we're gonna add some more depth to the skin again, because that's the focus of it. It's really the eyes and the skin. So we're gonna add a little bit more shadow and highlight to the face here. And again, we'll just do layers and layers of it. Oop. Highlight the nose. Just gonna brush it, you know, blend it out there. And we're gonna do the other side here. Trying to make the nose shape a little bit better. And it's a little bit weird, but like, I don't know why, but your brain handles, your brain basically is specialized. Like half your brain focuses on one thing and the other half focuses on another. So one eye typically is easier to draw than the other. If you do highlighter or, you know, like any sort of makeup, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But one eye is always easier to do than the other. And it's always in that way. So here, like her forehead's highlighted, and basically some of this is, um, I'm highlighting stuff by, I'm, I'm, I'm making stuff in shadow by making it comparatively lighter in other areas. So it gives it more depth. So some things I'm gonna basically just, oh, that's too, too much there. I'm gonna slowly add depth by slowly adding highlights and then make the make the shadows a little bit deeper and the um the highlights a little bit highlightier and then we just slowly work our way back and forth between those two values and eventually we'll get a somewhat decent painting okay i think it's probably about time to hit the cat again we haven't hit the cat in a while So I'm just basically going to, we're just going to go for it. Here we go. Now he's got a little bit of cheek fuzz here. And he's a Siamese cat, this cat is, which is why I haven't painted the face yet, because he's supposed to have a darker face. So I think like right about there, starting to kind of look like a cat, right? Yeah, it doesn't at all. I know. It doesn't look like a cat at all. We're okay. I'll fix it. <laughs> I'll fix it. <laughs> Can you even see it? Is it? texture here so working the cat and this part again I kind of like these paintings as like an exercise because you're not really worried too much about depth and stuff like that you're worried more about like emotion and color painting technique and stuff like that and with acrylics you're usually just fighting them but that's the fun you like to fight the acrylics I'll get it done eventually. Okay, so we're gonna add some um, variety of colors into the fur to make it look more lifelike and less like, uh, I don't know I even know what he looks like right now. But I am gonna add more color than he's gonna look like in the end because um, 
even though it doesn't look like color is all about bending light. So if you add a little bit of other colors, it can add some depth to it. Like even if you cover them up at the end, it'll add some depth if you add more colors than just what you see. And it takes a little bit of practice to figure this out and to figure out like how much is too much and how much is too little and what you know amount can you add. But by adding different le levels of color, you'll slowly um, figure that out. And as you paint, like you're like, oh, I did this before. So now I don't want to do this. And you know, you, you get used to it. It's like riding a bike somewhat. You know, you once you once you figure it out, you don't have to begin. Oh my gosh. That's not good. Uh, paint brushes came off. Those are good. I'll keep on going. So, little kitty cat. Okay, we're going to add some white to it again. He's mostly a white cat, but he's got definitely some brown in him. So I'm going to add some blue to the eye of the amount of blue in this painting. And it's not common for these kind of paintings. These paintings are a lot of brown, which is like the look they're going for. But blue is my favorite color and it always has been, always will be. Okay, so we're going to add, we're going to outline the cat in white to give it some more um, shape. Because right now the outline is good. we go. And it's looking better. Okay. Now we're going to add some white. We're going to add some like um highlight and stuff to this. Actually, it's more than she has on there, but we're going to go with it because I like it. And I want it to match the face as much as possible. Like in the original painting, there isn't much. Uh, I guess texture is what I'm saying, but as I've added, I want the painting to match. So I'm gonna add, like make the, makes the stuff look uneven, I guess is the word I'm looking for. I'm proud of her a bit because I like cartoons and this is about as cartoonish as you can get even though like the original didn't look that much cartoonish but oh well, it doesn't feel we're good oh I've been on for an hour and 30, 15 minutes already wow okay that's starting to look better um About this point, I start like thinking because you can overwork a painting if you're not careful. I want to add texture there. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Make it look deeper than it is so I don't have to work as hard. At least one more painting today, maybe a couple more. And do at least one exercise. I want to do. Um, there's two other paint. There's two other than this one. This one seemed like a fun one to do, so I started with this one. The next one, I don't know which one I'm going to pick next. I think I might do King Cut. I have a gold paint, eye, and I'm probably going to do King Cut next because I got the gold for it. Right about this time, I worry about overworking the paint because it's not exactly what I'm picturing. But if I go too far, I could ruin it. So it's always a delicate balance of 
do I keep going or do I, am I satisfied? And it's just that continual dialogue of, do I like this? Do I not like this? Why do I not like this? Would, would this feel better? And like, it helps you figure out like what you want in life. Kind of like you, you, you basically know yourself better. You, you, you explore yourself through art by like asking what you want and, you know, having con little conversations like this with yourself saying, oh, I like this. I don't like this. I want this, et cetera, et cetera. It's also kind of cool because I wanted a painting like this and now I have it and I can put it on my wall, you know? And it cost me literal dollars because I bought most of my class at the dollar store. And a lot of people, like, they can't just go to the dollar store, pick something up, and then put something, you know, make a piece of artwork for their thing that it means something to them. I think it's important to learn the basics of art. You know, maybe you're not, you're, you're not, like, I'm not famous. I'm never going to be famous. But I, I can I can do, I, I know what color theory is. And it does help me in my job, if I'm quite honest. Like, people think, oh, you're, you make computers and stuff or whatever. But. Most people don't understand computers, right? So they look at what the, the stuff that's pretty. What's pretty? You know, your stuff pretty. That's the question, you know. So if your stuff functions great, but it doesn't have a great people will be turned off by it. So by having a, even in stuff you think, oh, I don't need art for that. If you know art as you an advantage. It's not necessary for a lot of things. And to be honest with you, sometimes it's looked down upon. But I will be honest with you, art has given me a lot of opportunity, even if from the, from the outside you don't really see why it gave me opportunity. It allows me to make portfol better portfolios of work to get better jobs. It allows me to like be able to break down. And the constant... Art is constantly about learning. So it helps me to learn new things because art's constantly about me sitting there and saying, oh, I haven't done this before. How do I do that? And then figuring out how to do it. And if you're doing that constantly, oh, my, my brush did this again. If you're doing that constantly, it helps you at work. It helps you everywhere. So people think, oh, what use is art? It's actually very useful. Like, even if you don't, technically go into art the ideas that you learn doing art are incredibly useful entire life and I really do believe that because it it helps you explore things it keeps you like a lot of people when they grow up they stop learning and if you're doing art like you have a reason to learn like oh I want to paint a fish like what kind of fish do I want to paint and you have to go research fish that's useful to me like Keeping yourself creative is useful to me. And art's an easy way to do that. Because, I mean, like, look at this. I had the... Um... Right now, I'm, like, using live chat. And then, you know, painting. And now. And it's all, it's all because I like art. Like, if I didn't like art, why would I be doing this? Okay, that cat's a disaster. That poor cat. This is actually the arm here. I want to make that more clear. I'm pretty sure this is a girl. It's hard to tell. These paintings are fairly androgynous, so it could be a boy wearing a pink shirt. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, the color pink is in 
color pink was not always a girl's color. It actually was a boy's color at one point. And the reason was, was red was seen as more masculine. And blue was seen as feminine. So what do you give a boy and a girl then? You know, you give them the watered down versions. So a boy was actually blue and a girl was actually pink. Asking yourself, well, why is that different now? Well, part of the reason was around the time of World War II, the color started being associated with homosexuals, right? And the reason it was associated with homosexuals was because they were like infant infantilized. So they basically thought it was babies. So they would use, especially the Nazis, would use a pink armband to denote the um, gay people. And so at that point in time, people didn't want their babies associated with that. So they switched it. So now the girls are, the boys are blue, but it used to be the other way around. In fact, if you go look at paintings, there are a lot of, there are a lot of men in the past he wore pink proudly. And it's just a shame that it's gone the other way. Okay. We're going to try to make brown. I'm really bad at making brown. Uh, yeah. It's something I have to do all the time. And I am so bad at it sometimes. So we're going to go ahead and just. Oh no, I just finished cleaning this. I probably have a brown tube somewhere I could go grab and make it easier myself, but why make it easier? When I can make it harder, why would you make it easier? Make any sense? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Might water down some of that. Give it a little bit of water, make it more like a watercolor so that I can add some details without kind of blend it a little this cat. You still kind of possessed to put you a little bit. Okay. We're actually gonna take this and make the shading here. I think his chin comes down a little bit too far here. So we're going to fix that by going in with the brown quick. And there's, you never want the canvas to show. The canvas showing is bad. So we're going to go in right here with this bit here. We're going to very carefully go and do that. We're going to add a little bit of brown on the cat now. Oof, I am not good at painting cats, am I? Practice, let me practice. I've never painted. Oh, I'm trying to think. Did I ever paint a cat before? I probably have. I just don't remember it. The, to the evidence of the contrary, I probably have painted a cat before. I just don't remember it. It's been a while. Okay. I mix it with the brown a bit so it's a little bit not so hard an edge. Basically like sad cat. Don't be sad cat. Be happy. Be happy cat. My cat's reacting to that. She doesn't he doesn't like it. Okay. So we did add some red here and we're gonna go ahead and start adding like a very thin layer of like white and yellow and again, just to kind of like start bringing them together and making them look less red. Cause he looks a little weird with the red. But again, like I said, before, paint the opposite the color of what you would end up as. And the reason for that is it adds depth. Even if you don't, basically it makes you look at things a little bit. You're like, it doesn't look right. And if you make it so wrong that it looks wrong, 
you'll have better ideas of how, how, how to make it right. Okay, a little sad. He's a little sad, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay, kitty. Don't be sad. Okay, you're gonna like, he's got a cat little nose there. Little eyes. Little light to the eye, make it look more 3D. Gonna add some nice highlights here. Get my oh, you don't look so terrible. We're gonna outline the lip here a little bit. That's so it looks like a highlight. There we go. There we go. You're not looking so bad now. There we go. Now I got this brown here. And this girl's hair is brown. So we're going to start making it look a little bit less um, splotchy. So we're going to add, and like I said, most of this is underpainting. So it makes it. So we're going to add some and then start. Adding a nice layer on top. We're still letting the under layers hot come through a little bit, but make it not as obvious. And then we'll come back through with the last part and add some highlights here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's evening out the hair look a little bit less. Um, Making it look more smooth and more uniform while still giving us the texture of the stuff I added before. That will come in with another layer and add like some highlights and some more details. Make it look like hair. But yeah, as you can see, now it looks like brown hair, but you can still see the detail beneath it. And we'll come in in a second with some more, once this is dried a little bit, come in and add some more shadows and some highlights. Oh my God, I dropped it. There we go. That's nice. We're at an hour and 30 minutes. That's crazy. Okay. Probably a two hour mark. I'm going to cut this off so I can only got more 30 more minutes. Maybe less. He's starting to look, he's starting to look about like about right. So we're going to go ahead and with this same brown, I'm going to walk down even more. And we're just very carefully going to add, start adding a couple of little, like, small details here and there. And then maybe we might blend it out in a second. But yeah. With the acrylics, you go over the same thing over and over and over again until it looks right. I think I just gave her a friend. Oh, well. Happy accident. That's what we're going to call that. We're going to call that a happy accident. I didn't mean to do that, but we're going to call that a happy accident because that. Okay, now we're going to add some little details to the nose. Here we go. I'm going to add some to the lips. Add some more depth to the lips, I think. Yeah, that looks right. I think we maybe add a little bit of more brown to there. Okay. Now, cat's got to be me work again. Um, it looks to me like the girl has a little bit more arm here, and actually, like we're about there. So, here's the girl. Ah, oh, I see the arm this way and then around. Okay. I thought it was the other way around. That makes more sense. Okay. 
and then blot. Just add some depth. Now we're going to add some like, basically I want to add some highlights to the, um, you know. so I'm going to add, make some yellow white, water it down quite well, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to like just add, I'm not going to follow the painting exactly for this, but I'm just going to paint stems and slowly build up highlights. My um, thing keeps on hitting stuff. So we're gonna add some nice highlights. Just add some stuff to the cat too with this nice yellow here. Give it some nice yellow there. Some yellow there. Some yellow there. And we're going to basically um, make this cat's brown right there because that's definitely a brown Siamese paw right there. Now we're going to take the black and we're going to go back in and we're going to water it down significantly. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the highlights with the yellow and the white. We're going to water it down and add some depth to that brown hair, but not so much that it's obvious and it's also it's easier to blend but we're going to blend on top of during that's what we're doing we're, we're blending here we're adding some, a little bit more depth by adding some more shadows and then here i think this nose needs a little bit more darkness there because of the nose oh gosh that is the second time i've done that that is because my other camera going I'll fix that. Let's fix that real quick. Okay. So what to do when you make a mistake? Cost a little bit. And then go and fix it. Because, I mean, yeah. Uh, I have a bunch of colors here that I could choose from. And I'm going to go for, like, a whitish here. And the problem is, this was originally. That's gone. Uh, that's dry. We're gone. So we're going to add this yellow peach here, and we're going to go wider than that. We're going to add a bunch of, I don't know if you can see, I'm mixing that color right there. Add a bunch of white, and we're running out of space, so we'll have to clean this up before the next painting. And we're just going to paint it here. And we're, it's, it's a, it's, we'll, we'll blend it in. Uh, that's not so bad. We'll go on and fix it again in a second. We'll, we'll do another layer of fix there, but that should work okay for that. Maybe I should paint some of this, like, hack some of these off so I can have more range of motion even with the other camera in the way. Let's see, how is it? Yeah, we still got an hour left in that SD card there. Okay. Um, I'm almost happy with it right now. We're going to go a little bit longer, though, I think. I think I said we'd stay until another 30 minutes. Honestly, I might be about done now. Other than the nose. If the nose wasn't so messed up now, I might probably would stop now. But the nose needs a wee bit more fixing. I'm actually getting pretty happy with that. It's not perfect, but it does tell the story of what I wanted to tell. It's called the elements I wanted to tell, and I'm reasonably happy with them. They could be better. Like, it can always be better. But that would be for the next painting, not for this one. So, see? I got another dash of paint. I didn't want to I had my axe in a second ago. I'm gonna go in and fix that too. So we're just gonna add her a wrinkle in there. She's got a wrinkle. Look at that. And then of course I'm gonna take my tissue and just blot it out. 
was less obvious. Nah, that's fixed. Now we're gonna add some extreme highlights real quick and then we'll probably call it a day. Let's see here. I wanna add some highlights to the lip. Maybe his eye, just a bit. And I think these are not what Margaret would add, but they're what I want. So I'm gonna add them here. Then a little bit of shine to the hair. I might do more paintings again eventually later because they're fun to do. And I'd like to have one of her after she got divorced from her husband and ended up living in Hawaii because those are less sad. They look relaxed and stuff. And they might be a little bit a nice contrast to this one. But I think, I think that's pretty much it for this one. I'm going to call that one done. Let's see if I can move it so y'all can see it real good. But um, yeah, that was me live streaming, painting a painting I want to put on my wall. So go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and end the stream now if I can get, get my mouse to work. Anyway, y'all have a nice day. I'm probably going to be streaming again in a little bit of King Tut painting.